The concepts of normal and abnormal spoilage also apply to the job costing system. Job costing and spoilage. Job costing systems generally distinguish between normal spoilage assigned to a specific job from normal spoilage common to all jobs. Job costing and accounting for normal spoilage when assigned to a specific job. When normal spoilage occurs because of the specifications of a particular job, that job bears the cost of the spoilage minus the disposal value of the spoilage. So the journal entry to recognize disposal value would be materials control or cash control in the debit side, working process in the credit side. Job costing and accounting for normal spoilage common to all jobs. In some cases, spoilage may be considered a normal characteristic of the production process. The spoilage is costed as manufacturing overhead because it is common to all jobs. The budgeted manufacturing overhead rate includes a provision for normal spoilage. For spoilage common to all jobs, manufacturing overhead control will be debited instead of materials control. The costs of abnormal spoilage are not considered to be inventoriable costs and are written off as a cost of the accounting period in which the abnormal spoilage is detected. So when accounting for abnormal spoilage, if the spoilage is abnormal, the net loss is charged to the loss from abnormal spoilage account. Unlike normal spoilage costs, abnormal spoilage costs are not included as a part of the cost of good units. Instead, the costs are written off to an account called loss from abnormal spoilage. This is exercise 1840, spoilage in job costing. Here this company gives an information for job 10 in August 2017. A total of 46 units were started and 6 spoiled units were detected. Yielding 40 good units. The spoiled units were considered to be normal. Spoilage. The current disposal price of the spoiled units is 235 per unit. What is required is to get the normal spoilage rate. And then number two is to prepare the journal entries to record the normal spoilage assuming if the spoilage is related to a specific job if the spoilage is common to all jobs and if the spoilage is considered to be abnormal spoilage. In order to get the normal spoilage rate, you have to divide the units of normal spoilage, which are six units, divided by the total good units completed and they are 40 units so that the normal spoilage rate is equal to 15%. Number two, you journalize the entry for spoilage if it is related to a specific job. So in the debit side, you put materials control or cash control by the spoiled goods at the current disposal value. So you have here six units and the disposal value Scale unit is $235. And then you should credit the working process control for the job by the same disposal value amount. Then to journalize the entry for spoilage that, that is common to all jobs, you put in the debit side the materials control or the cash control by the value of the spoiled goods at the current disposal value, which is six units multiplied by the disposal value per unit, $235. And then the working process control will be credited with 6,600. The difference between the debit and the credit will be the manufacturing overhead control with a difference amount. 
and then journalize the entry for abnormal spoilage. So in the debit side, there is materials control or cash control by the value of the spoiled goods at the current disposal value. The working process is in the credit side for 6,600 and the difference is amounted as loss from abnormal spoilage in the debit side. Job costing and rework. Rework applies to the units of production that are inspected, determined to be unacceptable, but they are repaired and sold as acceptable units. There are three types of rework. Normal rework assigned to a specific job, that is the rework costs are charged to that job. Normal rework common to all jobs, so that the costs are charged to manufacturing overhead and are spread to overhead allocation over all jobs. Abnormal rework that is charged to loss from abnormal rework account that appears on the income statement. Exercise 18, 41, assuming that there are six spoiled units for job 10, they can be reworked of a total cost of 1,800. So what is required here is to prepare the journal entries for the rework, assuming the following. When the rework is related to a specific job, when the rework is common to all job, and when the rework is considered to be abnormal. To record the journal entry for rework related to a specific job, the working process control will be debited by 1,800 and in the credit side there will be the various accounts. So if the rework is normal but occurs because of the requirement of a specific job, the rework costs are charged to that job. The second entry is the journal entry for rework common to all jobs. In this case, the manufacturing overhead control is in the debit side and in the credit side there is the various accounts. So the cost of the rework, when it is normal and not attributable to a specific job, are charged to the manufacturing overhead and are spread to overhead allocation over all jobs. In the third entry, in order to record for the abnormal rework, then in the debit side there will be loss from abnormal rework and in the credit side there will be various accounts. So if the rework is abnormal, it is charged to a loss account. Accounting for scrap. Scrap is residual material that results from manufacturing a product. It has low total sales value compared to the total sales value of the product. No distinction is made between normal and abnormal scrap because no cost is assigned to scrap. The only distinction made is between scrap attributable to a specific job and scrap common to all jobs. Accounting for scrap assigned to a specific job. Job costing systems sometimes trace the scrap revenues to the jobs that yielded the scrap. And this is done only when the tracing can be done in an economically feasible way. No cost assigned to scrap, so no distinction is made between normal and abnormal scrap. All scrap revenues, whatever the amount, are credited to the specific job thereby reducing the costs of the job. Accounting for scrap assigned to all jobs. Because the scrap is not linked with any particular job or product, all products bear its costs without any credit for scrap revenues except in an indirect manner. The expected scrap revenues are considered when setting the budgeted overhead manufacturing overhead rate.
Exercise 18.34. So what is required here in job 372 uses a particular metal. Assume that the scrap of the material in amount and sold for $480. It is required to prepare the journal entry. And then there is a scrap for another job 372 consisting also of a metal used by many other jobs. The scrap is accounted for at the time of its sale and the scrap totaling 4,500. Number three, suppose that the scrap generated in requirement two is returned to the storeroom for future use. A journal entry is made to record the scrap. A month later, the scrap is reused as direct material on a subsequent job. So it is required to prepare the journal entry to record these transactions. For the first case, journal entry to record the scrap generated by a specific job and accounted for at the time scrap is sold. In the debit side, there is the cash or the accounts receivable with a total amount of $480. And in the credit amount, there will be working process control so as to recognize the asset from sale of scrap. In the second case, when the scrap is common to various jobs and accounted for at the time of its sale so that it could be accounted in two different ways. The first way is that regards scrap sales as a separate line item of revenues. So in the debit side, there will be the cash or the accounts receivable, and in the credit side will be scrap revenues, so as to recognize revenue from sale of scrap. The second way is to regard scrap sales as offsets against manufacturing overhead. And this, and this method generally used when the dollar amount of scrap is material. So in the debit side will be the cash or the accounts receivable and in the credit side will be the manufacturing department overhead control. In the third case, you should record the journal entry of the scrap common to various jobs at the time the scrap is returned to the storeroom. So the debit side will be materials control and the credit side will be manufacturing department overhead control. And this is to record the value of the scrap returned to the storeroom. When the scrap is reused as direct material on a subsequent job, the journal entry is going to be as follows. The debit side will be the working process and the credit side will be the materials control. And this entry is to record the, the reuse of scrap on a job. Accounting for scrap under process costing. Accounting for scrap under process costing is similar to accounting under job costing when scrap is common to all jobs. This works because the scrap in process costing is common to the manufacture of masses of identical or similar units. This is the end of chapter 18.